Hello there, this is Dennis, and I'm doing my second pen review. I'm a pen collector, but a new pen collector. I started about six months ago, have been bit by the bug, and haven't looked back since. I've already done one pen review on a pen called a Waterman Charleston. So if you want to look it up on YouTube, it's there. Uh, I, uh, I have a collection of about seven or eight pens, and my intention is to review each one of these. And my goal is to review for the newcomer, people who are new into the hobby, so that any of you seasoned vets out there, you can watch this, have a good laugh, but I'm not really going to get into the details that I know some of you pros do. However, the pen that I'm reviewing today is a very, very famous, iconic pen which is um, the Mont Blanc 149 fountain pen. And it is the most expensive pen that I owe, that I own. Brand new, this thing is 735 euros, a price that I could never afford to pay. I happened to get this one, I'm living here in Paris, I'm an expat. Uh, I got this one at an antique shop. The guy had, bunch, had buy, bought a bunch of these pens from a collector as a, as a kind of a set. And so he had this thing, it had never been inked, never been used. It was just collected without uh, inking. That's not the kind of collector I am. If I get a pen, I use it, I write with it, I try to write with it every day, uh, just to get a feel for it and to enjoy it, basically. That's the experience that I like about a pen, is the sensation I feel when I write. Now, I've, I actually, professionally, I'm a writer, and I never discovered a fountain pen until just six months ago. And the experience of writing is incredible because I always had really bad penmanship and the fountain pen actually helps me write better. Any fountain pen does. I started off with a, uh, with a 10 euro pen that I found at a brocant, which is uh, what, what they call a flea market here. And I was impressed by this Chinese no-name pen. And then I started looking at the internet at, at these various pens and I, got, I went crazy. But anyway, this thing has come into my possession. So what are my observations about it? Um, as a pen, it's got this classic black gold look. It's pretty darn big compared to other pens that I own. Just to give you an example, if you were a hacker like I used to be, you have like a big type pen or a hotel pen that you get for free when you get into the hotel. Well, if you compare that with this, it's like a very, very undernourished person. Um, super thin, super light, no personality. This thing, heavy, feels good in your hand, shines, and um, I guess it's a pen for men because it's really kind of a macho thing to have one of these things around. Anyway, just some observations I've had about this pen because the other pens that I own are in about the 100 euro range for the most part. And I thought it would be interesting to, to get one of these and figure out, is it worth the price? That's the big question everybody asks. Well, the first thing I learned is that Mont Blanc, which is a mountain in the Alps, um, the reason that this company is named that is, um, I don't know, that maybe some of you guys know, but what, is, what I do notice is that this is supposed to be snow at the top of the pen. It's supposed to be snow on the top of the peak, just like the Mont Blanc itself has always snow, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So this thing has got some gold, and I know that a lot of people get sucked in and buy fake ones of these, and there are some guys on the internet that'll tell you what to watch out for in a fake. I know in this particular case you want to look at the serial number, which is usually up in this section of the pen. And you can see it that if it's clearly marked as opposed to shoddy looking, it's probably an authentic pen. The other thing is if you look on the inside of some of these pens on the inside of the, the clip, there's like an X mark that uh, indicates that it's authentic. So you just have to be really careful. And the rule is, like with anything that deals with scams, if it's too good to, to be true, it sounds too good to be true, it probably is not true. It's a, a fraud or a scam. So anyway, this pen feels good in your hand. It's a kind of a gusher. Let me show you a writing sample of the pens that I have. And here you see them. And um, the Mont Blanc is down here. 
And you can see, even though I think that this is a medium, and one of the things about Mont Blanc that's not good is that it doesn't tell you on the pen itself, on the nib itself, if it's a medium, a broad, a fine, or something else. So you have to kind of guess. I think it's a medium, but it, it, does, it does print kind of broad. In any other pen, it would be, to me, a broad. This Levenger that I have up here, this writing sample of the Levenger True Writer, is, a bro is the only broad nib I have, and it's very comparable in terms of width to what I'm getting with this Mont Blanc 149. So, um, when the thing writes, it feels great in your hand. Again, it's heavy. It's a pen of substance. It is very smooth. It is not scratchy at all. However, it does got a couple of little things that are weird to me. One is that when you unscrew it, there's not much to unscrewing it. The other pens that I have, it takes two or three turns to turn it, and it almost feels like this thing isn't threaded enough so that you get enough screws to keep the, the, uh, the, the tip of the pen, the nib, protected. Maybe just an image of mine. Again, I don't have any dry out problems with this thing. It always writes. It's always juicy, wet, and ready to go. Uh, the nib itself, as you see, is large. It is a handsome nib. It is in a two-tone nib, and it's got, uh, you know, those uh, Mont Blanc words that are in it. It also has this weird thing that they call a window that is supposed to tell you when you're running low on ink. Because as opposed to all of the other pens I have, all of my other pens are converter pens. And they can use cartridges. This thing is a piston pen. So what happens is you've got this top part here that you spin either right or left, and it will bring the piston down to force the ink down if you need more ink, or, um, you know, if, you, if, if you're thinking that you're hitting a dry spot. The funny thing is, though, when you loosen this thing, it begins to uh, separate from this gold band, so you actually have a space. The, the deeper you get into, the lower your piston goes, the higher up this goes. And from a, just a, 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 a looks point of view, it's not as attractive. So I like to tighten it all the way back up, and that might actually not help the flow, because when you do that, it sucks it back in again. Uh, this thing always flows. It's just a question sometimes at the beginning when you write. If this thing isn't, uh, the piston isn't as maximized to, to make the ink flow down to the bottom, you might get a false start on the first letter of what you're writing. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, is this pen worth the money? Again, I paid 300 euros for it, which is probably $320 or something like that. Used, but un uh, I mean, it wasn't a new pen I got at the store. I bought it from an antique shop from a collector that never used it. So, new, yeah, I guess it is new. Um, it functions like as it should, feels good in the hand, looks pretty good, is a big pen. But I have other pens, honestly, that I own, and I'm going to go over all of them, that I think are superior pens to this one. That cost one-third of the price, and that are more attractive. So if you want to learn about those pens, check me out. But in any case, if you can find one for about 300 uh, euros, I think that they're a good deal. You can find better pens. Names aren't as well known. But if you're a fanatic and you want to have a piece of history, this is the pen. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.